In the previous lecture, we defined what entropy is, and we gave an equation that we can use to calculate entropy. So in this example, we're going to use that equation to calculate the change in entropy of an isolated system. Suppose that we want to mix two different containers of water. The first container is at 30 degrees Celsius and has a mass of water given by 25 kilograms while the second container is at 40 degrees Celsius and has a mass of water equal to 25 kilograms of water. So our two containers have the same exact quantity of water but are at different temperatures. So approximately, what is the change in entropy after our mixture? So notice the temperature doesn't actually remain constant, so that's exactly why we want to approximate it. So let's begin with step one. So in step one, we want to calculate what the final temperature of our mixture is. So we're assuming the two containers of water are our isolated system, is our isolated system. So since we begin with equal quantities of water, that means to find the final temperature, we simply find the average of the two temperatures, where T1 is simply the temperature of the water in container one, and T2 is our temperature of the water in container two. So the final temperature of our mixture is given by the average of these two temperatures and that gives us 35 degrees Celsius. So this will become important in steps two and steps three. Now let's move on to step two. How much energy is lost by the water in container number two? So the water in container number two has a temperature of 40 and then it drops to 35 degrees. So because there is a temperature drop that implies energy must flow out of our system. To calculate how much energy flows out of that system, we have to use the concept of calorimetry. So the Q loss, the energy lost by container number two is equal to negative multiplied by the mass, multiplied by the specific heat, multiplied by the change in temperature. So we have negative 25 kilograms multiplied by the specific heat of water, 4,186 joules per kilogram times Celsius multiplied by the change in temperature. So we have 40 degrees Celsius minus 35 degrees Celsius. So notice that the negative sign comes from the fact that final minus initial is 35 minus 40 and that gives us negative 5. So we multiply these quantities out and we get 523,250 joules of energy is lost by the water in container number two. Now let's move on to step three. Now we want to calculate how much energy is gained by the water in container number one. Now because we're dealing with an isolated system, all the energy that is lost by the water in container number two is gained by the water in container number one. So that means we simply take the negative of this value. So once again, positive 523,250 joules of energy is gained by container number one. Now let's move on to the final step. Step four, find the total change in entropy. So once again, we're approximating because the temperature doesn't actually remain constant. So from the second law of thermodynamics, we know that the change in entropy is equal to the change in entropy of system number one, container number one, plus the change in entropy of container number two. So the H simply means the high temperature and L simply means the low temperature. Now we know this is equal to the following result negative Q, the energy lost by container number two divided by the intermediate temperature between the high temperature and the final temperature plus the energy gained by container number one divided by the intermediate temperature between the low temperature and the final temperature. And this must always be greater than zero if 
we're dealing with a real process in an isolated system. So, so we basically know that the intermediate temperature between the high temperature and the final temperature is simply the following result. So we take the high temperature, we add it to the final temperature and divide that by 2. And that gives us 37.5. And the same step can be taken for this version. So we have TL plus TF divided by 2 and that gives us 32.5 degrees Celsius. However, the temperatures when we're calculating the entropy must always be given in kelvins. So we have to convert that to kelvins. And that's exactly what we do in this case. So the change in entropy of our system is equal to negative this value divided by 313 kelvins plus 308 kelvins divided by 2 plus positive we have 523250 joules divided by 303 kelvins plus 308 kelvins divided by 2 and this gives us the following two quantities so this implies the following the entropy of our container number two is decreased while the entropy of container number one is increased. And if we sum up these values, we get a positive value, 27.77 joules per Celsius. So that implies that even though the entropy of one part of our isolated system decreased, entropy of another part increased by a greater amount. So that means the total change in entropy of our isolated system increased. And that's exactly what the second law of thermodynamics tells us.